Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, I'm very sorry for the delay. I had a lot of difficulties today with the, uh, with my internet uh, launching everything. It was very, very troubling, but that's okay. I'm here now. Uh, I hope everyone is liking the touch of the music, the Islamic. <laughs> I liked it. The Islamic vibe here that is going on. Do you go to sleep with that every night? <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, yeah. It's very calming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, th I've, I was. Uh, I actually found that when I was uh, making a parody video about uh, converting back to Islam, and I saw this uh, this Islamic humming, and I thought, hey, it sounds nice. And then a... later on, I thought, hmm, I should actually make something of this. So I started to remix that and turn and added, added a beat to it. And oh, well, you did a good job. And that preview <laughs> thing you did as well was really good. The one on about doubt. Oh yeah! Oh, that one. I totally forgot that I put that there. Yeah. So you made all these yourself? Yeah, I made that myself too. Yeah. You don't have a team of like the apostate prophet network team of no. You, had, you don't have twenty employees in your basement that you unfortunately not no. keep locked up and dark and. Well, let's not talk about that part. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you call it? Like um, the Muslims in the Middle East at least have a way that they sing. That's like um I forget my wife is in she has a master's in music and she know would know oh. what I mean. There's a like a triplet thing they do like ah, like it's really yeah, fast. Yeah. Do you know what that's called? Uh, I don't know what it's I don't know what the name for that, but yeah, it's a very Middle Eastern thing that they and do it's very that. unique. Yeah, it's a, a a constant varying in the thing uh, in the in the in the whatever you I call like it. it. Like yeah, it, it's, to me, that's the only reason to convert to Islam. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's <laughs> Yeah, what, what they also do is um, what you see very commonly in Middle Eastern cultures, in Middle Eastern music, is that they uh, will uh, endlessly keep, like, like they will en endlessly lengthen a certain sound and do this thing like, ah, and go with that forever. You know, that, like uh, there are certain songs that are extremely long and extremely oh. slow, and it's it's very strange. So they're like, <laughs> it's a type of apologetic song. It's just long and slow. <laughs> yeah, 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 it, it is, it is, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. That's, you also see that in, in, in Islamic, uh, Muslim Islamic music, and also in recitations of the Quran, for example, where they do stuff like that too, like this constant changing of the pitch and all that, uh, and just really dragging it, you know. And it's a, it's often a cappella, right? Or it's all a cappella, no yeah, it music is, it is background. All, yeah. 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 It reminds yeah. me of my Mennonite heritage. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah. Do you have such things there? You you have a Mennonite background, right? I, yeah, I, mean, I, I was raised, that. born and raised uh, in an igloo in Canada, and uh, with two Mennonite parents. And uh, but the church I went to was a little more modern. But I've been to churches where the men sit on one side, the women sit on the other. This is a Christian church. Mennonites oh, are yeah. Christians. For those uh -huh. of you who might not know, and uh, and then a a big fat man and wearing black would go to the front, and just start singing loud no music no some churches don't even have electricity yeah. and because that's of the devil and um it, yeah it is it is uh th th there is a difference I, I often see people confuse uh or there is a confusion as far as i uh, as, as i remember it correctly between mennonites and certain other christian communities like right? yeah like amish amish uh, amish yeah yeah, but, yeah mennonites but, but, are but, um Amish are more colonial, community-based. Mennonites are more entrepreneurial, um, personal responsibility type based. Hutterites is another sect that's similar. They're all pacifists. Uh -huh. So I was, I was raised that if a stranger comes into your home, you're yeah. better off letting them kill you than you kill them because you know you're going to heaven. But if you kill a, a burglar or a robber, odds are that um, they're going to go to hell. So why are you going to send them to hell when there's still more time for them to repent and see the, the ways of Jesus? Interesting, interesting idea. Interesting idea. <laughs> Makes sense. So, uh, how is it with your, um, we, we, we just jumped right into it, but um, so what you do is mostly on your own channel, on, on your own channel called Pine Creek, which I, by the way, linked in the description. What you mainly do is to analyze the belief in God and you uh, respond to Christian apologists. You have discussions with them and all that. How did you get to that? When did that happen? Uh, let's see. I left Christianity when I think I was around 40. 
and I became a deist for about six months. And then I realized there's no good reasons to be a deist either. Um, well, I know the deists are mad at me right now. And then, uh, so I started I calling my, my, uh, started calling myself an atheist around 40, 41. And, um, and then I started listening. I still had some, um, issues, you know, pent up issues mm -hmm. <laughs> about things I've heard Christian apologists say, Christian pastors say that I thought, no, no, it's, they're not given the whole side of the story. They're not telling the whole truth. And so I felt I needed to correct the world and uh, start a YouTube channel. But I did it mostly for my own uh, way of uh, venting and maybe correcting past wrongs that I personally have done in my life. Um, but yeah, I view my channel as more uh, entertainment for me. And if people want to listen to it, so be it. Um, but it's it's actually grown quite a bit considering I've never asked for subscribers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I got a pretty solid following of people who building some type of community, which I think we all know with atheists is often lacking. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then recently I got into uh, Islam and oh, uh, yeah. have fun with that now we will, we will, we will get to that. Uh, we will get to that. You know what? I, I actually um, found you because very honestly, uh my wife was listening to your channel a lot and i kept hearing you in the background well like when she's doing something she's listening to your channel and i keep hearing you in the background and, and i'm like who the hell is this guy that you're listening to <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I, I kept i i heard that so i got interested into uh in your in your channel and uh checked it out and uh, found it quite interesting and well, she uh, she told she has told me that if both our channels are on at the same time she'll watch me and not you <laughs> I will. I believe that. I will believe that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know. Uh, yeah. Um, what was I saying? You completely threw me off with that comment. Now I'm very. I'm very. I'm very. I'm boiling inside, but I'm trying not to not to make it too obvious. Uh, oh yeah, how you first found me? Uh, your wife was listening to me. Uh, yeah, then, yeah. 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 Uh, oh, I, what, I, what I liked about your channel is that uh, I liked your approach in critiquing ideas and questioning ideas. And it, it was like uh, you had a very different approach. You didn't have this very hostile attitude. Yeah. You had more of a you had less of the um, of the philosophical word soup. Uh, oh, I hate that. Do, do you word salad? That's what you, how we say it in English, right? Yeah, word salad. Yeah. The philosophical word salad, but more of a direct logical uh, analysis questions and answers approach and i really liked that very much about uh about your approach to um critiquing and questioning religion and you did the same thing with islam right the first thing that you had the first interaction that you had was uh that you went on to a uh to a youtube channel of muslims where you yeah. started asking them questions right yeah and i also answered all, all their questions and um According to the home office in Wichita, which is the cha the home office that runs my channel, they said it was the best uh, atheist appearance on the, was it called Hamza? Hamza, yeah. Yeah, it, it was rated the highest according to the Nielsen ratings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice but they got mad at me afterwards how was your how was your um your impression of islam and of muslim apologists especially after um your history your story with uh christian apologetics and christianity so far how was it uh how was your first impression of them of islam and muslim apologists compared to that um in general is uh, muslims are way 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 behind in at least as, as far as in content creation um and i, I i'll be honest i'm t talking from an american canadian type perspective uh it it's like they're not interesting to watch at all wow. and at, le at least the christians are are trying to make some entertainment value now there although there's one guy that i was really impressed for entertainment and he's almost like um a comedian what's his name he's a big kind of fat but muscular guy uh you a muslim apologist and you did a video on him death to or some uh someone, <laughs> what's his oh, name that, Uthman ibn farouk ibn fibin that guy yeah. In fact, he was in your preview on the show, like the the doubt. Oh, oh, you mean you mean Mohammed Hijab? Yeah, 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 him. <laughs> like I can tell, his approach is mostly comedy, right? 
And so that's kind of effective. <laughs> it's not meant to be comedy, but it is it. Yes. But yes, it is comedy. Yeah. I think it's not meant to be comedy. I don't understand it so far either. But uh, I thought he was a comedian. Yeah, right. That's what you would think. Right? Yeah. What makes you what makes you think he's a comedian? Well, just the way he can um he's like a MMA wrestler type. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's definitely a, a character he's playing. I think I I think he's being serious. I think he's serious. I don't want to speak oh. in his name. I don't want to misrepresent anybody here, but I think he is being uh, <laughs> quite serious. Well, that's like saying Although... Dwayne Johnson is, thinks he's really the rock and can pile drive. <laughs> no, he knows. <laughs> it's an act. Yeah, yeah. No, no. But yeah, that's that, that, that actually a good, a good comedian. That's a, that, is a, that is a good one. But you, you, you do find him very enjoyable, you said. Well, he's he's definitely entertaining to watch to kind of laugh. I I was laughing with him, but now you're saying I should laugh at him. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to tell you that, but I'm sorry to be the one breaking it to you. But yeah. But with Hamza's den, I when I went into there, I found all the gentlemen there uh, quite pleasant, uh, quite knowledgeable. At least half of them. I don't think the what's the red haired guy's name is that that's Hamza, right? Don't they all have red hair? Because uh, yeah, I think that's Hamza. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about him, but I think the rest are um, are pretty educated. And and what I found interesting is, and and some Christians do this as well, is that when they're talking to the, an atheist, they will kind of avoid specific theism and just talk more about this nebulous philosophical God, the Creator uh -huh. God that started uh -huh. the ball rolling, and go to more. Well, how do you explain this, Mister Atheist, sir? Consciousness or uh -huh. first cause? <laughs> it's like, and so my advice to anybody listening here: if you're talking to a a, was it, a mom, is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah. If you're talking to an imam, imam or yeah. or a uh, Muslim apologist. Just even grant them that a God exists and say, yeah, but now let's focus in on which God or if any God of, of any religions of the world is true and just focus in on specific theism. The smart, the smart Muslims and the smart Christians will always go top down. Mm -hmm. And the way you talk to them is you go bottom up. Well, the funny thing is, is that uh, when you discuss Christianity with Christian apologists, for example, um, when they want to discuss uh, theism, the existence of God or the existence of an undefined creator, uh, even if it's if it's that, you know, th at least they have a point because uh, you can have many different approaches to uh, how you characterize God, how you explain God and this and that. I, I encountered this with several diff different Christian apologists that I talked to. The funny thing is with Islam, you can't really do that. With Islam, uh, there are no different inter interpretations of the afterlife. There are no different interpretations of heaven and hell. There are no different interpretations of uh, the nature of God and this and that. It is, it is like, it is all very simple. So you can't really, um, with Islam, it's quite, uh, nonsensical and kind of hopeless to be stuck with theism to discuss whether God exists or not. It's like, but wait, I've I've interviewed a few Muslims who call themselves Amadea, 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 yeah, yeah, Amadea. and yeah. to me, let's talking to them compared to a Sunni is very different. Uh, yeah, yeah, in different ways. Yes, it is. Uh, they will have a quite different approach when it comes to uh, the politics and the morality within Islam. They will try to, uh, or they will at least appear to have a more uh, pleasant approach and a and more pleasant representation of Islam. Uh, they believe in quite absurd things. So they believe that a certain uh, <laughs> person called Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, who lived only like, what, two centuries ago, uh, was actually um, the last, the final messenger, the Messiah and the Mahdi and all of these things together. And he died and he went away. And uh, it, it is a very strange movement within Islam, but Muslims generally do not accept uh, them as Muslims. They usually yeah. consider them as uh, non-Muslims, as disbelievers and heretics. But even among the Sunni and Shia, don't they even differ on things like, did Muhammad really fly up into the heavens on a winged horse? Like, don't they even, some say yes and some say no? Yeah, there is a, uh, even within Sunni Islam, there are certain uh, groups, certain um, numbers among Sunni Muslims uh, who do not 
necessarily believe that Muhammad literally flew to heaven on a on the back of a flying mule. Just Some like believe faith. that this was just uh, metaphorical, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those those Muslims are flag waving phonies. They just don't have enough faith to believe that God, their Allah is powerful enough to do that miracle. They are weaklings, I would say. Yes, yes. But <laughs> uh, the thing is, there's some Muslims listening right now who agree with exactly what I just said. Is it, yes, is it exactly. Those who do believe it happened. Yeah, exactly. The funny thing is, when I talk about Islam, uh, many Muslims also do uh, agree technically with uh, most of the stuff that I am saying. They just disagree with the fact that I am saying it yeah. and with my implications of. You know that that follow from what I'm saying. Yeah, so. I noticed that when you came on my channel because uh -huh. it seemed like they had a really nitpick to disagree with you. Like yeah. Whenever someone said, "Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You shouldn't have this guy on your channel to teach you about Islam because you don't know what you're saying." Well, okay, be specific. What did he say in an hour or so length that you thought was clearly wrong? And He's a liar. Don't trust him. Yeah, and it's like the, there was maybe two or three things that that some Muslims brought up, but it was again, I bet you we could find Muslims who would agree with you on that on those points, uh -huh. and there were like matters of interpretation on some things, and um, yeah, but I agree they they don't like you because you're effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they don't like me because I am a liar, and. What can I do about that? You know, it's not like I can start telling the truth or anything. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, when you compare Muslim apologists to Christian apologists, um, first I want to say that I found your comments uh, about how Muslim apologists are way behind very offensive and very uh, degrading, and I hereby want to dissociate myself entirely from your remarks. About <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, I. I honestly think, I genuinely think, and I don't think this is a bias that I have. I think when I look at Christian apologists, I see a lot of sophisticated uh, debating and arguing of uh, certain ideas, although I don't agree with them, and although I think that many arguments therein within Christian apologetics are also quite weak and weird. But when I look at uh, Muslim apologetics, I feel like it is so far behind, so far below Christian apologetics. Maybe it's because Christian apologetics is, is much more experienced, whereas Islamic apologetics, because Muslim society has been uh, so uh, closed, yeah. has not been open to discussing ideas publicly, and they are very much behind, and now they are slowly getting into it, which is why they are so bad at apologetics. I don't know. Maybe that's the reason. But their, their arguments are usually extremely laughable to me in comparison. And I'm glad that I'm not the only person who's noticing this. I'm glad that that I can that I can also have you here with me testify to that, so that I can free myself from all the hate that is currently coming our way. That's good. You know what's interesting is the Muslim guests I've had on. I'll ask them very simple questions, and it's fun in a way to see them struggle <laughs> because, <laughs> like, very simple questions like, "Do you really believe?" Um, a man got the revelation of a creator God deity through an angel in a cave over 23 years. Do you believe it? And then they'll say, yes. And then why, why do you believe that? And then they'll give their answer. Well, uh, the Quran has been written in his perfect way or whatever. And then I'll, I'll use my flying man thought experiment. I don't know if you ever heard that. Uh, I think I've, I've heard of it, but, but go ahead and explain it. Please. And, and so, yeah, so people who are listening right now, you can use this and just say, well, okay, if we we're walking in the forest and we stumbled upon an old text and we dig it out of the ground and we read a page that says, here are the very words of God, uh, written to a prophet named Myron and, um, and given through an angel, uh, Jessica, uh, would you believe that this is actually the very words of God? <laughs> if that's all you knew at this point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Muslim has to say, no, of course I don't believe this. is. I would need to read more. And then at what point would you say, ah, yes, at this point, I now believe these are the very words of God given t through an angel to a person. Uh, th this is the tipping point because we can add in things like prophecies and um, we know exactly who wrote it. And... I still think Muslims would not believe it that that this certain I often say it's my ancestor many generations back who could just fly across the Grand Canyon and so the whole mm -hmm. book is about him. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a prophet of God but he could fly unaided. 
And uh, I don't think Muslims would believe that my ancestor could fly across the Grand Canyon unaided based on the same evidence they have for Islam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, um, what is, what is, um, I mean, there is a lot of uh, difference between how uh, the Christian scripture came into existence and how the Islamic scripture came into existence, what uh, the Christian scripture relies on in terms of uh, evidence and supporting arguments and what the Islamic scripture relies on. Uh, you don't indeed have any proper uh well like christians for example rely very much on the on the resurrection right i mean you have the yeah. you have the experience yourself that they uh, mainly use the resurrection as the main argument that uh is supposed to support the truthfulness of the christian faith uh whereas in islam you don't really have that what islam does is or what muslims do is uh muslims argue that the quran itself the text the book itself is so miraculous that it can only be from uh allah that it can only be his direct word it must definitely come from him there okay, is no other I, way you can explain help, the help, right. help me understand this because i read i don't know the first several chapters of the quran <laughs> just like a couple weeks ago yeah and to me it's like a grade six summary of the old testament mostly yeah 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 how in the world do do I have to? What am I missing? What's so miraculous about how it's written? It is very funny. I actually, um, like about a year or two ago, I uh, met up with one of my relatives, um, and for the first time, we talked about why I left Islam because they asked me why I left Islam, and uh, I said, "Can we just do one little thing? I will just." Uh, I I knew that that person has never read the Quran. They're just uh, Muslim because parents are Muslims because family is, is Muslim. I just said, "Here, let's start reading the Quran together. Just sit there and just just start reading from the very beginning. What do you think about it?" And I know that this person is uh, very educated and studies, uh, uh, goes to medical school, has gone through all kinds of different different studies, and uh, I don't know so. So much about the world, not so much about science. And I, I just watched the expression on the face, and like she's so confused. Like, <laughs> and just after after two minutes, I asked, "So, what do you think about it?" And she said, "This is very strange. I, I don't know. It's like it makes very weird claims that are scientifically seen. I don't want to speak the words, but laughable." And <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you really give this book to a person who doesn't know and you and you let them read from the beginning you see these very strange you see the very strange language you see how the how the book is structured it it's not it's not well organized the language appeals uh doesn't appeal to the modern person to the modern modern intelligent person the information that it provides uh you with is not very uh remarkable it seems like it is very uh, offensive tries to bully you into liking it and all that there is nothing Nothing really miraculous about it. The issue is when Muslims uh, learn about the Quran from a very young age, they learn all the time that this is definitely the book of Allah, the Almighty Allah, who is the best, who is the greatest of all, who is uh, perfect. He sent this book to you and there is no questioning this you there are several different commands given by muhammad and by the quran itself which instruct you clearly not to question not to yeah. doubt not to think even at the Can beginning the, at the beginning of the quran it says this is the book about which there is no doubt and uh those who doubt are hypocrites they are sick they are deaf dumb and blind so you are primed to think that it is miraculous no matter what it says yeah and see Hearing that, my plea to Muslims listening right now who are here, what does this remind you of when someone says, don't question what I have to say, <laughs> and if you doubt it, I mean, bad things are going to happen to you. This is exactly what cults do to keep people in the cult. And then there's promises if you stay, you've run the good race to put a Christian spin on it, you will get these great rewards. Th this whole idea of carrots and sticks and you cannot question like muslims listening please do the opposite of what you've been taught question it question it question it. even if that means your parents hate you afterwards although some some countries i'm giving advice that might get you killed right so yeah. you gotta be careful here yeah 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 but the thing is if you value yeah. this thing we call truth you do have to question now I, I can say all that and still say Islam could be true, but still the fact that you're not allowed to question and doubt it, that speaks volumes of how infantile your religion is. 
The the issue is uh, some Muslims may bring up or may bring this objection and say uh, we are allowed to question, we are even encouraged to question, but this is uh, a miscorrect, a misinterpretation of mis misrepresentation of their own text and of their religion. It never tells you that you are supposed to question this religion. What the Quran tells you repeatedly is uh, this is the truth. Do you not reason? This is the truth. Do you not use your mind? This is the truth. Why do you not think? That's not that's not questioning. That's not thinking. If I uh, if I become a dictator, a ruler over you, or if I write a book and say this is ab the absolute truth, why do you, why don't you use your mind? Why can't you see that this is the truth? That is not an encouragement to think. That is not an encouragement to reason. That is simply me asserting my uh, supposed yeah. truthfulness upon you and bullying you into believing that it, that it is true and insulting you, insulting your intelligence for not agreeing with me, for not believing that what I'm saying is, is true, even if I'm even if it's wrong. That is not an encouragement. We even have a, a, a report from Mohammed where he reportedly, supposedly says, uh, it's, it's very funny, this is actually something that many people question, even in today's time. He says, uh, the devil might may come to you and ask you who created this, who created this, and who created that, until he asks you who created Allah. That's what the report says. That's what Muhammad said, according to the report. And then he says, uh, when he comes to you with such idle uh, questions, repent to Allah, repent and uh, abstain from such empty thinking. That's what he says. So this is the command that he gives you. He doesn't answer the, the doubt. He doesn't answer the question. He doesn't provide any philosophical arguments for it. He's, what he tells you is, be quiet, shut up, don't think about it, just repent and pray to Allah. So it's, it's very ironic, actually, that Muslim apologists today try to uh, answer these questions and try to try to provide philosophical arguments to uh, the question, why, uh, who, who created God? When Muhammad himself simply said, hey, don't think about this, repent and uh, seek refuge in Allah. Yeah. So that, that is what Islam encourages. It doesn't encourage you to, you to think at all. The whole book is uh, requires you complete submission. It even says uh, in a certain verse that the true believers are those who, when they hear the commands of Allah and when they hear the words of Allah, they say, I have heard and I have obeyed. And they don't question any further. I have yeah. heard and I have, what does that sound like? <laughs> yeah. Can we get a little personal here for a second? Like, I don't yeah. know your backstory, but when you left Islam, did your are your parents still Muslim? Yeah. How did that affect them? Well, uh, I know how sensitive my parents are about this whole stuff, so I didn't actually tell them for a while. I kept it to myself just because I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want the drama. I didn't want to hurt my mother's feelings. But I was preparing for that. They found out. Uh, like uh, two years ago or so, and they were very hurt by it. I still have not had a conversation with my father ever since he found out that I left Islam. It has severely damaged our, our relationship. Can, can you articulate yeah. for me exactly why they were hurt? Well, to them, it is worse than me dying. If I die, at least I will, uh, you know, probably go to heaven as a Muslim. But now that I have left Islam, uh, I have not only ruined my own afterlife, the afterlife of their own child, I have also gone against Islam's uh, orders and betrayed myself, betrayed my family, betrayed them foremost, brought shame upon them. Now, every time people ask them about me, they will have they will feel shame and will try to explain. Ah, yeah, I don't know how to explain this. I have betrayed my nation. I have betrayed the entire Muslim community. This is the sentiment, and this is why they are uh, so hurt. And on top of that, of course, I am openly here criticizing Islam, and knowing that brings even more shame. It 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 brings tenfold shame upon that. So it it is really extremely hurtful to them. Do you think it's more the shame? that you bring in upon them or the fact that they truly care that you're going to hell? I think both. They most definitely both. They truly care. Uh, they would want the best of me, uh, but the best for me, they care about that. It's also definitely the shame. I, uh, shame is very big in Muslim culture. It was also very big in our family, in our culture. Yeah, it's both. So when's the last time you've seen them? Uh, when was that? Uh, two years ago, I think. I think. Did you uh, tell them face to face that you're no longer a Muslim? It, it was very funny. Uh, I was actually, I actually went to visit them. I actually, uh, I planned to fly to Turkey. I'm currently in America. And uh, 
and to tell them face to face about everything that happened. And what about what happened is that um, before I flew there, the day before that, they found out about the fact that I left Islam and that I criticized Islam because somebody else told them apparently. Uh, so when I got there, they were already in a very strange mood. And <laughs> eventually I sat down and started talking to them. And yeah, I don't know, it was, it was, it was weird. Do you think they ever watched your channel? I doubt it. My mother might look at it, might check it out, I think, but she doesn't understand anything. She might understand the Turkish videos that I have uh, made. I don't know. I have no idea, to be honest. I uh, Someone asked me that question, and so I asked my parents, and my mom said, oh, I asked my mom, and my mom said that uh, my dad has watched a few of my uh, videos, but he said he had to stop because he cried after every single one of them. Really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. So I get I get where you're coming from, and and the hurt that can be caused from leaving uh, uh, the religion, but it still it kind of boggles my mind. Like if if your dad was uh, I don't know what sport you're in, but uh, if you and your dad shared the same team, mm -hmm. and you said no, I'm not going to cheer for that team anymore. I'm going to cheer for that team he wouldn't have that sense of shame and, and huge, no, maybe, no. Maybe, maybe a little bit, but yeah. what is it about these religious beliefs that make people freak out that the world's coming to an end or it's just. Well, you know what, what I think about um, when I think about that is this whole idea that, um, that the end is coming soon. Uh, Muslims, dominantly have this sentiment my family had that too they have the idea that life is temporary they have learned from the beginning of their lives that uh, all of this is temporary that bad things are going to happen soon that probably the end is coming soon look the world is going to 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 crap so it will probably all end soon funnily enough this is what people have thought for thousands of years and uh they think everything is going to going to end soon we have to stick together we have to make sure that we all believe so that we can uh go to the good place when we die and that is all that is your entire purpose that is that is how you learn to live you learn to live for that for that it, specific thing your entire life is built on that so when so when your when your loved one your son your your child suddenly stops believing in that then it is i mean it it it, it destroys everything that you know about about life but if we were to ask your parents what determines your final destiny heaven or mm -hmm. hell well how would they answer that uh, well, their belief is very clear that uh, if, as long as you live, you testify that Islam is true and that you believe in it, uh, you will most likely go to heaven. And if you clearly and openly reject it, then you will definitely go to hell. Okay. Uh, what they would think is that there might be also a... Well, what they will say is that they are in no position to judge whether someone will go to heaven or hell because it could be that in their final moment, they, you know, before they took their last breath, they maybe uh, said, oh, I am a Muslim, I believe. Uh, you know, so anything, anything could happen. Maybe that will, maybe that's what I will do. You know, maybe I will, I will be dying. Now, uh, I believe in Islam. <laughs> that that's dying. probably how they so, console themselves is they yeah, think maybe, that you're going to make a deathbed reconversion or something that's what i think i think that uh sometimes they probably as as far as i know them, they probably tell themselves that i will eventually turn back but uh, they should bed. be losing hope and <laughs> yeah and that probably doesn't feel good yeah yeah my mom she doesn't worry too much because she believes exactly that that before i uh -huh. die i'll come back to christianity yeah, you probably will yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> if, if, before you take your last how, how is it with your with your beliefs right now is it like are you uh convinced atheist do you leave the question open do, are, are you more agnostic i'm, when it comes I'm to uh i like i'm a numbers guy so uh -huh. i'm like 99 percent convinced that all religions of the world are false uh-huh uh and i'm maybe a little bit lower 97 percent convinced that there's no god out there or gods at all but I'm open to that plausibility or that possibility, I should say. And what would make it more a plausibility, what would change my mind is a clear demonstration of a miracle. 2000 year old text, 1600 year old text, not gonna cut it. But, uh, 
people are healed in hospitals after they have the flu and people pray for them and then they don't have the flu anymore the next yeah, day. What are you going to say about that? And and my aunt prayed the other day that she'd get a good refin refinancing deal on her home loan and it happened. So they're <laughs> <right? laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah um well, I would need, my standards are high so none of this my too, back yeah. pain is gone business <laughs> show me a someone who's had their arms blown off in the iraq war pray in the name of allah that they get their limbs back what that that is the that is the argument that i made i'm, I'm actually preparing something here that i want to make a video on that i'm even i'm even um I even hired somebody to make me a painting of something because uh, my argument will be, and I will be very, I will be very insistent on this because people keep asking me what would make me believe, and uh, I will not believe if I see that that blind people suddenly can see because that's a quite quite a normal thing that can that can happen. Mm -hmm. What would convince me is if a person who is proven to miss a leg, if that person is prayed for, if that person prays, and then we see. That a that a leg descends from the sky and attaches itself to this man so that he gets his leg back. If I see that happen, if we can see, if we can see that happen, if we can see that happen in front of the world, then I will well, you know believe what? that there's probably something going on here. That uh, yeah, you're just like me, except maybe our stands are a little too high. And I'm going to make it simpler for Muslims watching right now. Got a little bit of water in here. I'm gonna. Drink some. I'm not trying to trick myself or any of your viewers. Here's a Kleenex. Soak it in there. If someone can pray in the name of Allah right now to light this on fire in front of our eyes, I will consider, I will believe in the supernatural and I'll consider Islam as the source, the one true religion. Wow. Okay, the challenge is out. It's dripping with water. Just light this on fire. I'm okay if my hand burns, in fact, because then all I can fix it. Okay, can I pray too? Can you want to pray on behalf uh, of Muslims? Yeah. I can. I, I will pray on behalf of uh, the unknown being. Okay. The unknown, undisclosed. Okay, dear, dear being who uh, wants to give us a sign, dear being who wants us to believe in him if we see a sign, please give us a sign right now and please light doug's uh thing here that he has in his hands on fire please do it right now for all of us to see we will believe that there is something going on here let's just give it like five seconds yeah one two because sometimes there's transmission problems to mm -hmm. the firmament yeah it doesn't happen okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the, the point is like so many christians and muslims alike they, they cherish their holy text so much and i don't think they appreciate just how people like you and i read these texts and say so what mm -hmm. like, show me something today that can be demonstrated that can be observed and, and if this god really wants to be known and and understood and the truth be known do it. You don't have to do a miracle every second of every day, but you know, once a year is good. Yeah. So every generation has ample ch chance to see a demonstration of the supernatural. And I think even guys like Matt Delahunty would convert to theism if he ran this little experiment and it worked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think you should put this put this part where we prayed. Uh, you should make a short clip of that. <laughs> To show that we have, uh, yeah, we have attempted to to demonstrate the truth of uh, of the supernatural, but it didn't work. Hey, I we I watched I watched your video that you made recently about ten facts about Muhammad. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And I thought it was great, but what you need to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take that, and whenever a Muslim comes on, I'm just going to ask true or false questions, <laughs> and I I'll just say I'm not going to push back. I'm not going to argue with you. I just want to know, do you lean true, lean false, lean yes, lean no? Did Muhammad marry a six-year-old? Uh -huh. Yes or no? Did Muhammad own slaves? Yes or no? And just go through that list and just get the Muslim to hear themselves. Hopefully they watch it back. Hear themselves believing in the most insane things. 
I actually started making a list. I made. Uh, I started making two separate lists of questions that I want to ask a Muslim, because I recorded a short video that I want to, uh, in which I asked tw ten questions to a certain uh, Muslim personality who was trying to convince people online that Islam is quite uh, nice and cute and all that. But I'm uh, I'm in the process of preparing a uh, a one hundred question list uh, to Muslim apologists that is, uh, not meant to be, um, not meant to be a debate. I, it is not meant to be, uh, consist of, is not meant to consist of follow-up questions and of me refuting their arguments. It's just me asking them certain questions and starting very easy. Like, are you a Muslim? Do you believe in the Quran? Do you have the, can you, are you allowed to uh, reject anything the Quran says and so on. And then slowly asking these questions, like, do you believe that the sun goes to a, that the sun goes to prostrate itself under Allah's throne at night, for example. Do you believe Allah flooded the earth with water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug, I want to ask you a question. Now that you are here, I think this is a very important question to, uh, I always ask Muslims and it's quite unfair. So I want to ask you too, uh, where does the sun go at night? Uh, I think behind an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> a big yeah. umbrella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you do you believe that the sun goes somewhere at night? <laughs> no. Do you do you believe that the sun goes to prostrate itself under the throne of Allah at night? No, but I could be wrong. You could but be no. wrong. Do you believe that the sun sets in a muddy pool at night no and do you believe that the sun asks allah for permission to rise again and then it gets permission and rises again in the morning no and do you believe that one morning the sun will not be given permission to rise from allah so it will go uh the opposite way and will rise from the west again no i gotta do you, how what percentage of muslims in the world would say yes to all those uh to if we remove one question which is uh the sun setting in a muddy spring because uh, many people will try to do a reinterpretation of that because that is in the quran and they want to reinterpret that as metaphorical uh the rest of it many muslims in the world will probably answer yes many informed muslims i cannot give a percentage the issue is that uh the vast majority of muslims are ignorant about uh islamic scripture islamic texts ignorant about things that muhammad said so many people would actually not know that muhammad said these things these are the words of muhammad uh but those who know among those the vast majority would say yes i would think like over even percent would say yes even like medical doctors who are Muslim, who are aware of this, they would say yes too. They would say they would probably uh, if they if they certainly believe in this and if they know about this, they would probably say yes. They would just try to uh, reason with how this is a matter of the unseen, although that makes no sense because we are clearly speaking of where the sun goes at night. And but here's the thing: the interesting part is um, the very final question there which is, uh, do you believe the sun will rise in the West one morning? The vast majority of Muslims everywhere, over 90%, believe that to be true. They believe that this will happen. They, they believe that this will probably happen very soon, that the sun will one morning rise in the West, which is very strange because if you ask them, how is the sun going to rise in the West? And why would the sun rise? The sun is not going anywhere. It's not moving. It's just, it's right there. We are. Are around. a lot of Muslims flat earthers? They're not. It's just very hard to reconcile the idea of a spherical earth with these verses, and they yeah. rather do not think about it, or they reinterpret it as a matter of the unseen. <laughs> do you think if we had a time machine... Sorry, there's a Muslim trying to get in my house, and my working on a German shepherd is going crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I can't hear you. you, you muted. Yeah, I, I was muting the dog. But oh, um, okay, okay, what was I saying? If we had a time machine. Oh, if we had a time machine, we found Muhammad in what was the fifth century? Yes, yeah, seventh, seventh century. Seventh, seventh century. He was born in the sixth, but preached mostly in the seventh century. Yeah. If we found him and asked him what shape is the earth, do you think it's a guaranteed? He'd say a sphere. I don't think he would have any idea about the answer to this question, but he would definitely not say sphere. 
he would think mm. that the earth is this ground which is surrounded with water probably endless water and that above yeah. us are a number of skies above which there is Allah and he would also uh if you asked him the question what um these things that we call uh shooting stars are you know meteors he would uh say that uh what that is dear followers and dear friends what that is is sometimes the devils the jinns they try to fly and rise up to the sky and they try to rise through the skies to the high assembly of allah that allah is holding with his angels where allah shares important knowledge about the future with the angels and those devils try to ascend to that assembly and try to listen secretly and steal knowledge from that assembly and then they are noticed however the sneaky devils, they are noticed. And when they are noticed, the angels quickly throw fireballs at them. They throw missiles at them. And then the jinns quickly run away and try to give the information to the other one and to the other one, to the other one, until they come down from the skies. And when you see a shooting star up there, that is actually that flame that the angels are throwing at those jinns. So it sounds like Muslims, like Christians, believe in this spiritual warfare idea that there's real demons and devils out there and do the muslims believe in angels well of course they believe in angels so at least the angel yeah, gabriel yeah yeah, yeah. like but, do do they view you as like one of satan's minions or being influenced by the devil and that maybe it's not your fault and maybe it's because you've just been possessed by satan? yeah what well, uh, they have different interpretations. Many of them simply think that I am a disgusting, evil liar who knows that Islam is true, but who is... But so weren't you created in the image of Allah? Uh, they don't really have the, quite the same interpretation of that, no. No, they don't think... No, but but Allah created you. Allah created me, but Muslims uh, openly and clearly believe, as the Quran says, they clearly believe that Allah um, created all humans. He created uh, humans just so they worship him. But uh, many of us, if not most, are um, bound to go to hell because Allah created us for hell. He created us for hellfire. And uh, it, is, it is very strange. This is actually something that if you sit down with Muslims and, and, and ask them about this, they don't really know how to get out of this. The, the Quran says Allah created you just so you worship him. It also says that he created many human beings just for hell. And it also says that Allah guides and misguides whom he wills. And those whom Allah does not want to guide, but, but whom he misguides, those people are simply stupid, blind, deaf, and dumb, and they are sick in their hearts. So there yeah, is really I some kind of mess Paul. going on. Yeah. I think Muslims got that writing. I, I, and I don't believe for one second a guy named Muhammad actually said or wrote those these things. But whoever wrote those verses, it's in the Quran. That is or, in the Quran, yeah. Yeah, That's all in the Quran. I think those they got that direct from from Paul. I think because Paul talks about that. Uh, Muhammad, I'm pretty sure Muhammad uh, was very uneducated about the uh, Christian beliefs and the Jewish beliefs. He was, however, uh, influenced and took a lot of information from Christians and Jews. Um, what likely happened is that he learned from people around him, from certain people around him who knew about Jewish Christian beliefs. And he was also a merchant before he was a prophet. Uh, and he traveled a lot to Syria on a, on a, on a trade route where he met uh, Jews and Christians. And he probably really admired their religion and took from them as much as he could. And yeah. really, really, really butchered their religion and adopted things into Islam that are taken from Christianity and from Islam, but they don't really make sense. Like the whole concept of Jesus, for example, like uh, the whole point of Jesus not having a father coming with a virgin birth is that, that, that Jesus is the son of God. Uh, Muslims take Jesus as a prophet. They deny that he's the son of God. They deny that he is divine, but they do believe in the virgin birth. And now you ask the Muslim, so who is Jesus' father? And they say, nobody. Jesus was born without a father. Okay, but why? <laughs> then they're like, well, just because, because it's a, it's a miracle, because Allah just made it like that because it's cool. Special. Yeah, it's cool. It's special. Yeah, but why? What's the point? 
well, why wasn't Muhammad born without a father? Why was Jesus born without? Well, you, why? Who are you to question this? He was just born without a father. It doesn't make sense, you know. Islam adopts certain things from these beliefs without uh, them actually making any sense within the context of Islam. It's very strange. Hmm. <laughs> Getting back to Hamza's den, a thought just popped in my head. You know what question I asked them that bothered them the most, in my opinion? What? It was my poof or drown thought experiment. Have you ever heard that one? What is that? No. Okay. So if you're an atheist and you're talking to a Muslim, ask them this question. And I, I would bet money they're not going to answer it. But if they do, it's kind of fun. So the question is, um, and Muslims believe in the global flood story, or at least some type of flood story. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I use that out of the Old Testament. And that's okay. So it's that time in history. You're up in wherever with Allah. And Allah says, you see humanity down there? Ugh. What a mess. You know what? I'm going to exercise my justice on those people. Except for Noah's family. We'll spare them. But anyhow, I'm giving you two options of how to exercise my justice. And both options are moral and good because I, Allah, am giving it, giving those options. So they're moral by definition. So option number one, I'm going to send flooding waters and we're going to drown all those evil men and women and pregnant women and and toddlers and babies and animals and plants just drown kill them all dead that's option one option two is i'm just going to go poof and they're all gone <laughs> so here's the thought experiment question to muslims listening and and all is asking for your opinion your advice he doesn't need your opinion doesn't need your advice but all is a gracious god i mean he, he sometimes likes to talk to people and so he asks, what, what would you prefer? I drown humanity or poof them out of existence? And every person on Hamza's den refused to answer that question. They, <laughs> they refused to admit that there could be anything in their moral intuitions that has friction against their Allah. And I, the only explanation I can come up with is that it's not even a healthy fear or respect. It is a terrifying fear of mm -hmm. going against their God mm -hmm. to say to even for a second, entertain the idea that their way of dealing with something might be different than their gods. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is, it is, um, Muslims are extremely sensitive when it comes to, uh, certain, when it comes to, uh, questioning or possibly speculating and disagreeing with Allah and Muhammad, not just Allah. In fact, uh, many of them are, could even be more sensitive when it comes to Muhammad than when it comes to Allah. They have a very big honor culture surrounded, uh, which which surrounds their belief in in, in or their their loyalty to Muhammad. But yeah, it, it is very hard for them to actually uh, speculate in the name of or in, in, instead of Allah to put themselves into his position. Like when I uh, when I when I discuss with Christians when I have debated with Christian with with Christians I have seen that they were quite uh, okay with me just speculating about what God would do or what you would do if you were God and they just uh, talk about this they discuss with me about this but with Muslims it's very um, they get very uncomfortable if you do this because um, Islam is indeed very sensitive in regards to that I don't know exactly why uh, that is established. I will probably think about this later and uh, realize why that is. But um, well, it is probably... very hard, it is very hard for them to even to even um, speculate about Allah's motives or what Allah could have done instead. What they will think and say is that Allah had His reasons. He had a purpose. He knows what He's doing. You are nobody to question this. You will not understand this. Yeah. You will only waste everybody's time. And I grant all that. Like when I do the thought experiment, I grant them all that. But uh, and I'll even tell them my motives. I said my goal here is to pit you against Allah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm, I'm setting a trap, and I, I'm asking you to walk in it because if you have the truth, it shouldn't matter if it's a trap or not. Mm -hmm. Just walk right into my trap and answer the question honestly as you can. And they still won't do it. It's just like no, how, I, I he can hear me. If I say I'd rather poof these babies, Allah will hear me. Say, hey, he, he can even see my thoughts, so I can't even think about it because I don't know what – do they believe that God, uh, Allah, will smite them or something? Yeah. You, you know what? Um, with me, when I, if, I, if I give an example of my, for myself, uh, I was very religious. I was very faithful. Um, 
But for me, leaving Islam, the process of just leaving Islam took a lot of time. It took many years. It wasn't a matter of just, you know, with uh, an hour or a day or a month or anything like that. It took it took very long. And uh, most of that was just stalled because I was so afraid of just thinking about questions. You know, it's, it, it wasn't the conclusions. It wasn't any of that. It was just, just uh, beginning to question yeah beginning to even to think about the certain questions was so terrifying to me that i remember like i had i read the quran and i read something about uh allah holding up the sky so it doesn't fall down on us and it it was really i don't know if i can i cannot describe it but it was so painful for me to uh, get those intrusive thoughts of reading that in the Quran and trying not to think about that because I am trying to convince myself that I'm just a stupid little human being. I am not in any position to even begin to question this. I am not supposed to think about it. I have to think about something else. I should say Allah or I should say, uh, forgive me Allah, instead of thinking about that. It, it, but it, was it your... took a long time to actually convince myself that there is nothing wrong with simply using my mind and thinking about this, you know. <laughs> but was it hell that was the impetus, the cause of this hesitation to question? Um, hell pl definitely plays a big role in it because the Quran is, to the majority of its content, full with uh, stuff about violence and threats. And in much of the Quran, on in every chapter abundantly, you will see threats of hell, of how those who question or how, how those who disbelieve, those who reject, will uh, be tortured forever and all that. But it's more than just hell. It's just you are indoctrinated with the idea that this is where you belong. This is who you are. This is your identity. It's not just your belief. It is your identity. It is who you are. You are yeah. not to trust anything beyond this. The the questions that you are getting, the disbelievers who are asking you questions, they are uh, trying to trick you and deceive you. This, it's, 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 they are the enemies of Allah. You are not to trust anybody. You are supposed to uh, strictly hold on to this. And all of that simply makes you feel very anxious about yeah. even speculating about certain things. See, what I did to myself and what I would have done with a person like yourself if we were talking before you left Islam is I would say, I would ask you, do you value truth more than fear? Mm -hmm. In other words... And to any Muslims listening right now, I want you to desire for just, I don't know, take an hour this week and be totally okay with going to hell for eternity. Try to force yourself saying, you know what? I value truth so much that I'm willing to go to hell for it. I want to know what's real and true. And then try to get that fear of hell. Just treat it like spit on it. Just treat it like dust. Like, uh, pff, who cares about hell? Now, I care about truth. Who cares about hell? Now, let's look at the evidence. And once you can take all that fear, and you can do the same for heaven if you lean that way as a Muslim, that you don't worry so much about hell, but you just want to, I don't know, go to paradise and get those virgins or whatever. Mm -hmm. Put that aside. Say, ah, forget about those virgins. Forget about paradise. I'm more concerned about the truth. And then I think if you can do that, like for maybe an hour a week, and then start studying objections to islam it'll just it'll be more quickly it'll crumble because you've taken the two big motivators away fear and love you know what the issue is um muslims and uh muslim preachers and authorities in general will be quite honest in admitting that they definitely do not want you to do this because you will probably because you might end up uh losing your faith you might end up disbelieving you might end up rejecting uh your beliefs they will indeed i i would think most muslims maybe will admit that if you do this you may lose your faith which is why you should not do this because uh if you think uh and, and this is how they explain it if you think and if you question and if you allow yourself to to have doubts then it is not reason which leads you out of islam it is uh your ego and satan which who are uh you know trying to trick you and trying to pull you away from the truth of islam which is why you should not indulge in such thoughts well if if 
a leader in Islam were to say that to me, I would use the outsider test for faith. And I say, you know, Christians often think the same thing. And would it be, wouldn't it be so sad that they couldn't find the truth of Islam because they constantly think, oh, these yeah. Muslim apologists, they're actually Satan trying to tempt me away from the truth of Christianity. I can't listen to them. I can't listen to them. Yeah. I, I, the outsider test for faith is a wonderful tool to just show how these defense mechanisms have been set up so you can't get out or you can't even question, or you can't even possibly imagine. In fact, here's another challenge for Christians. Go in front of the mirror every morning, look at yourself in the mirror and say, Islam could be false. And then do then conduct your day. Every morning, wake up, look in the mirror and say, Islam could be false. I can do that too as an atheist. Atheism could be false, there could be a God. I can have, do that, no problem. But I have a, I bet there are a lot of Muslims would have a problem just doing that looking in the mirror and saying that every morning yep you might you went you went muslims right you just said christians that's what oh yeah muslims christians yeah, do yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 uh it wouldn't be hard for christians to say to me it's a knockoff muslims. of christianity <laughs> and christianity is a knockoff yeah. of judaism yeah and judaism yeah. is a knockoff of sumerians and other yeah. ancient years yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 sorry muslims but you know uh what i what i did to myself uh Sounds like I did something bad to myself. But what I did uh, when I was uh, questioning and when I was at the end of it was to simply think, um, you know, because I'm so afraid of questioning, I'm so afraid of going through with my questions. I thought, uh, hey, I believe that I was created by Allah, who is the most merciful, the best, the most uh, knowing, the almighty and all that. And he created me with the capability, with the ability to think and to question. He gave me a brain. He gave me a mind. He gave me the ability to reason, to ask questions, to get answers, to come to right conclusions and to wrong conclusions. I am sure that if I have good intentions and if I really want to find the truth and I know for sure that I want to find the truth, I'm sure that if I come to a wrong conclusion, Allah will not blame me in the end for that because he knows exactly why I asked my questions. He knows exactly what my motivation was. He knows exactly where I'm coming from. He gave me this mind. He gave me the ability to, to, to do all of this. So I motivated myself to simply think about this and to go through with all of my questioning and see what happened. I left Islam and I'm pretty sure, uh, to be very honest, I, I, I am 100% sure that Islam is false. So there is no such possibility to, to possibility to me anymore. But even if Islam was true and even if Allah was real, I'm pretty sure he would never uh, <laughs> judge me for doing that. Uh, just going. Well, yeah. So if Islam is true, guys like me and you actually could still go to heaven. Is that what you're saying? Uh, that's what I think now. If I was if I was a Muslim, I would probably not say that because that would be in contradiction with the core beliefs of Islam. But yeah, <laughs> can can I ask a favor of you? If if you were to give me the evidence for Islam in chronological order, in bullet point form, like just a few words, like <laughs> miracle of the Quran or something like that, uh -huh. could you do it? Like maybe ten of them. And I got my pen here. I'll write them down. Uh, I'm, I'm asking because for my flying man thought experiment, I need to know a little bit. I more. could I could give you a few. I would probably have to sit down and think about like what's the what would a Muslim people. say is the earliest piece of evidence, earliest like the, in history of Islam of of specifically of Islam, not of yeah. uh, Abrahamic history. Or they, yeah, they would probably, I think they would probably give an example of uh, a priest who supposedly told Muhammad that he is a prophet when he okay. was still a little child or something like that, or when he was younger, that there was a, uh, a cloud it's following Pentecostal. Muhammad. There was a cloud following Muhammad and the, a priest saw him and said, you are a prophet or some, or, or this guy is a prophet. I think that is one of the earliest uh, prophets. Okay, what would be, be next? Uh, help me out, guys, if you know. Um, what would be next? Like, well, next. what is the story about the cave and when did that come? The story around? of the cave uh, is the beginning of his prophethood. They would, uh, that's when he's uh, 40 years old. That's uh, what they would certainly give as evidence. The issue is you can't really take that as evidence for anything. It's just him, he himself experiencing that. They would give as evidence uh, very strange things, such as that Muhammad was known as a trustworthy man by people before uh, he started preaching. They actually do give that as evidence. Um, <laughs> uh, one more evidence, it's as funny as it sounds, is that uh, 
Muhammad pinned the words uh, of Allah on the Kaaba, and it was better than anything that people uh, could ever write down, that people ever could uh, compose. And this clearly proves that, 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 that the Quran was miraculous. They will definitely give you the miracle of the Quran in general terms as the major evidence. And what that means is the literary miracle of the Quran, because it is so beautifully written, nobody can write anything better than that. Yeah, that's not uh, subjective. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff. The moon splitting definitely is one of them. My child is the most beautiful child you've ever seen. Like, show me a child as make beautiful a, as mine. Make a better child. Make a better, make a better child, and then I'll believe in your God. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Muslims, are you laughing? Come on. <laughs> I, what's funny is uh, this is actually the major challenge of the Quran. The Quran says uh, if they are truthful, then let them produce something that is better or let them produce a chapter or a book that is better than this. That is the major challenge of the Quran. The screenplay for Pulp Fiction, done. <laughs> <laughs> and... What's funny is since the since the conditions, since the, the challenge is, is not clearly defined, nobody can actually check whether something is indeed better or not. So they are free to always uh, make new conditions and to say, well, what you have brought forth is definitely not better because this and this and that, you know. Okay, I, I'm making your list here, and I'm not impressed. <laughs> what about uh, eyewitnesses? The, the, the moon splitting. The moon was split in two okay. in Muhammad's time. That is, oh, that is the greatest somewhere. evidence. Yeah. What about prophecy? But, but the issue is, the issue is, Doug. The issue with the moon splitting is, you have to understand that the moon was split in two, and according to the Quran, the people in, in his surroundings saw it and said, "Magic, magic," but uh, nobody else in the world saw it, and uh, that is probably because everyone was. It's sleeping. just like, it was everyone a cumulus was cloud that just went like at an angle. And it no, it's, it look... it's because everyone was sleeping at that time, which is why nobody saw it in the world. And... But the people who did see it, it was like just a cloud in front of the moon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> moon splitting. There's at least one or, prof or a couple of prophecies, right? Uh, oh, yeah, there are, there are prophecies which, will, which they will give you, such as that uh, in the future people will die. Uh... <laughs> There'll be wars and rumors of war. <laughs> that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, people will become ignorant. Uh, yeah, people will. Uh, time will pass very rapidly. Time will be very fast. That's, yeah, as that's you get older, that's big, true. Yeah, that, yeah, that that's one big miracle of Muhammad. Okay. Uh, one other miracle is earthquakes will increase. Earth, earthquakes will increase. Yeah. Oh, Muhammad, uh, Allah predicted uh, yeah. global warming. Yeah. Did I mention? Uh, did I mention? Bad things will happen. That's, yeah, you mentioned that. Well, no, that will die. And that's one of the prophecies of Muhammad. Bad things. Will what happen. about eyewitnesses? Like, is there anybody who witnessed Muhammad have these uh, revelations in the cave? Uh, no, no. But, but who are you to trust? Who are you to judge? To doubt Muhammad? So Muhammad no was known as Muhammad was known as a trustworthy witnesses. person. He was known as a trustworthy prophet. Who are you? Who are you? Yeah, there's trustworthy surgeons who believe in Scientology. I mean, come on. <laughs> there's Mormons who are lawyers. Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. He was he was trustworthy. People always thought, oh, he's a good trader. We trust him. I would I would buy and sell uh, things with him. And they even one one day one day they were trying to uh, put the black stone. This black stone is something that the pre-Islamic polytheists uh, had, had a lot of respect to and a lot of worship for. And it came off, or they tried to renovate it or something. And somebody had to have the honor of putting it back onto the Kaaba. And they and they were fighting about it, like who's supposed to do this? Who's going to do this? We 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 can't fight about this. We have to make an agreement. Let us do this. The first person who walks through this gate will have the honor to put it back on. So they waited, and Muhammad walked through the gate. And they said, oh, the trustworthy one. So Muhammad came, and uh, he was given the honor to put the black stone back onto the rock. And this is one more uh, proof which shows that Muhammad was okay, specifically what you just honorable said, and trustworthy. What you, what you just said, who wrote uh, that down? Uh, well, certain people wrote this. Uh, What's their a name? A few centuries after Muhammad, 
certain people who wrote this down uh, for a few centuries. Do you know that person's it. name or those people's names? Well, we know those people's names because uh, they took it from somebody else who heard it from somebody else who heard it from somebody else who heard it from somebody else. And that's oh, so why hearsay. we know that it's true. Hearsay written how many years later? Uh, 100 to 200 to 300 years later. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like strong evidence to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm being very facetious okay. here, but come yeah. on. I'm sorry, I, I didn't give you the biggest evidence. Which oh, is, okay, uh, number 10. Muhammad, is Muhammad rode, rode uh, on the back of a flying mule, or of a flying horse donkey oh, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to Jerusalem. And from Jerusalem, he uh, ascended to the sky. To, there any eyewitnesses of that? to go to heaven and in heaven he met all the prophets including moses he talked to allah and then he came back again uh did you say eyewitnesses sorry yeah was there any eyewitnesses to, to that well the issue is what you have to understand the issue is that according to the reports uh this all happened within seconds apparently muhammad was sleeping in his bed and he then he was woken up and his heart was washed he was brought to heaven and came back and then okay but this is a dream then right and and he got up it's not a dream it really happened but uh and muhammad okay, who, said, went, who saw the horse besides muhammad nobody saw it but you have to trust muhammad in this and uh muhammad said when he turned when he came back his bed was still warm so it looks like he just got he just it was probably warm just and because it was wet he peed himself yeah 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 <laughs> Sorry, um, but the issue is this: we're talking about Muhammad. You don't need eyewitnesses for Muhammad. You only need Muhammad as a, as why? a man for his own actions. Why do we not because need eyewitnesses? Because he's the trustworthy. Well, I mean, <laughs> I everyone should trust me because I'm trustworthy. <laughs> Yeah, me too me too okay so let me but, i got you you did well you gave me 10 in a short amount of time so muslims i want you to listen to your evidence for islam <laughs> a priest tells muhammad he's a prophet sounds like pentecostalism to me um he experienced had some weird experiences in the cave but there's no eyewitnesses of that he was known as a trustworthy man but we've got trustworthy surgeons and lawyers who are believing the weirdest things like in mormonism and scientology he had good penmanship number four Number five, the miracle of Quran, a literary miracle, which is uh, maybe it's close to Pulp Fiction. Uh, number six, the moon split, but there's no eyewitnesses of this. Um, oh, yeah, well, maybe there are, but uh, most people were sleeping. Number seven, uh, we got prophecies that people will die. Number eight, uh, oh, I just have no eyewitnesses as a piece of evidence. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have, we, uh, yeah. Number nine, we got hearsay of a of a lot of things in the Quran written a hundred to two hundred years later. Oh, here here is one that I want to give you additionally, uh, since you didn't you don't have ten or you know. And number ten, the fine donkey. Okay, but here's here's one more. Uh, Stop scamming, men! Help me out with this one. He said, uh, "Naked Bedouins will compete in building tall towers," and this is a. Uh, prophecy of Muhammad when people asked him when will the last hour come Muhammad said the last hour will not come until you see uh, naked Bedouins with sandals competing in building uh, tall buildings and uh, I bet I know where I got they got and, that from and do you know how we know that this prophecy has come true well look at skyscrapers Dubai at yeah tall, tall buildings Dubai Look at uh, buildings in Chicago, New York, around the world. See, I, 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 there's an easy explanation, even from the Muslim 7th century point of view, and that is they've read the story of the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament. And, they, and, they're, and they're just saying that will happen again. That, that's what I have thought. But uh, again, what, you, what, you're not, what you're not understanding is that Muhammad was known as the trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if, if that's the Muslim answer for for everything, uh, when you start questioning <laughs> Muhammad, um, I got a neighbor two doors down. His name's Myron. He said he's the final prophet, not Muhammad, and and I know this is true because he's trustworthy. Well, and the thing is, this is better evidence because you could come down to my place, so we can talk to all of the neighbors and friends right. and confirm that he's trustworthy. You can't do that with Muhammad. Well, then, then tell him to bring something that is better than the Quran. Then I will believe him.
I already said the screenplay for Pulp Fiction. <laughs> oh, one, one more, one more uh, challenge that the Quran has. Uh, I'm not bringing this up as another evidence, but one more challenge that the Quran has is actually very funny. This is one of the biggest challenges of the Quran. You know what the Quran says? The Quran is talking about the uh, the polytheists, you know, who believe in these multiple gods and who believe in these in these uh, in, in these in these other beings that are uh, better than Allah, that are truer than Allah. And the Quran says, the Quran says, wait for it, if they are truthful and if what they believe in is true, then let them produce their proof. Let them bring their proof for their gods. They can't because they are liars. <laughs> so is that an argument from um, we know everything else is false, so therefore we're right? Well, the Quran clearly says uh, if their gods are true, if their gods are indeed helping them, if they are real, then they should bring their proof for their gods. And they can't, which means they are false. Oh, oh, no, there's there's a god, the goddess, the god of Myron. And I got proof right here. A priest told Myron that he'd be a prophet. He yeah. experienced uh, a revelation from the true God in a cave. He was Myron was known as a trustworthy person. He had a good penmanship. The miracle of this stuff, he produced something like it. Oh, by the way, the moon split like four times um, under Myron as the prophet. But, but can, it, you, can you show that, 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 they, that his, his God is actually real? Can you show his God? Can you show his power? Can you show right here. This is evidence that he's real. And he's trustworthy. Did I mention well, that? It's, it's not enough. Not enough. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is where the outtest, outsider test for faith just totally is very useful. <laughs> but when I'm like, in all seriousness, when I'm talking to a Muslim, I, and I've had a, a lot of great conversation with, with Muslims on my channel. Uh, there's one guy whose name is David, I think. Uh -huh. And we've, we've talked three or four times. And I don't act this way. And like I'm, I'm being you both of us are being little, nice. Yeah. yeah, I'm nice. And I ask mostly questions. I use the Socratic method. And because I realize these are deeply held, cherished beliefs for people. And um, I think using questions that get, that raise the cognitive dissonance in their beliefs, using the outsider test for faith and say, well, okay, you don't believe that for that reason. Why would you believe it, this for Islam? And just over time, I, I am a big believer that over time, it just, it wears people down. It's like death by a thousand cuts. It's, as a lot of my Christian friends like to say, it's a cumulative case, but against the religion. Well, I think I think what you would eventually get to is uh, one major argument, which uh, in order to refute that or even to compare it to something else, you would have to put a lot of time into it, which would be that uh, nothing that the Quran said has ever been falsified. <laughs> and everything that the Quran uh, says, and all the assertions that it makes about the world around us and about things in the future and the past are undoubtedly true. And the, the Quran is the only book which has this quality that none of okay, it, that nothing can be falsified and that everything that it says can be true. So good luck with any that. Muslim who says that. Any Muslim who says the Quran's never been falsified has not listened to a Christian who says the same thing about the Bible, the New Testament. Well, the Bible has been corrupted and changed by Christians. The right, Quran, but that. But the point is we have a human being who has a mouth who utters the word. There's nothing in the New Testament that's been shown to be fal false. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and they're sincere and they truly believe it. Okay, now Muslim, look yourself in the mirror and say, you could be that person who just utters these words. The Quran's never been falsified and sincerely believes it and is crazily wrong about it. Uh, I don't know well, how more forceful I can put that. I mean, well, Christians only make claims. Uh, Muslims actually believe in the truth. So uh, Christians <laughs> only, yeah, yeah. So that's that's the answer to that. And uh, if we run out of answers, I think the final answer, the final evidence, the final proof would be: uh, you just wait till you die, and then you will see. And uh, well, we, we both know only atheists go to heaven. I don't know why Muslims are taking this huge chance. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's so much at risk and at stake. Yeah. yeah. God, the God that actually exists doesn't need to be worshipped and actually condemns anyone who believes any religion of the world's true. Yeah. yeah. And who uh, condemns anyone who doesn't question uh, all the religions of the world. I don't, Muslims, Christians, why are you taking such a huge chance? You, hell is at stake. Only atheists go to heaven. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. But the thing is, and what I just but, said has never been falsified. But Doug, are you 
I don't think that there are any reports of you being known as the trustworthy, who was also a good trader that everyone could trust, that everyone could uh, safely buy from and sell products to. So I don't think that you have many big chances here. Even that, I don't believe. <laughs> what, what was it, B.B. King who sang the song, Everyone Lies a Little? I mean, oh. Uh, Really, I want to say something. It's seriously. I mean, um, this is indeed. I'm not joking. I mean, I have been uh, acting like acting very dumb here right now, but uh, Muslims will actually insistingly say that Muhammad was uh, even prior to the Islamic revelations, prior to his prophethood, he was known as uh, reliable. And this is actually an argument for Islam. This is actually an argument that they bring. But. The issue is we have like two reports about that, that Muhammad was apparently called a reliable person. We cannot really trust these reports because in one of them, the person himself that we hear the story from reports that he himself told a king that Muhammad is a reliable person while he was telling on Muhammad, which sounds extremely unrealistic, especially if, if we went more into the details, it would sound very stupid. But even if we did trust those sources, and even if Muhammad was known as a reliable person before the time of his prophethood, it doesn't say anything at all about his major claims about uh, Allah and his prophethood and his talking with uh, an angel and his claims about the afterlife and the coming of the of the of the day of judgment it doesn't say anything at all even i would even grant that maybe muhammad was known as a trustworthy person maybe he was known as a reliable person he was a quiet guy that people could trust with their money that people could uh, wait a minute do muslims believe muhammad sinless they believe that he's free from major sins, from big sins, major sins, yeah. Like what would be a major sin in Islam besides denying Allah? Uh, like drinking alcohol, having premarital sex, uh, or you know, extramarital marital sex, things like believing in multiple gods, rejecting God, things like that. So they also believe, which is a very strange thing, they also believe that Muhammad was therefore uh, necessarily never a polytheist, although he was born into a polytheistic uh, environment, polytheistic culture, polytheistic tribe, polytheistic family. He himself was never a polytheist. He himself was always a believer in the one God because Muhammad can, by definition, not commit any major sins in his life. That's very strange, but yeah, that's what they believe. <laughs> I see it on your face. Doug. I know. I see. I it's, see it. it's After a while, it just gets disheartening. <laughs> people will believe stuff uh, from what is it 1400 1600 years ago that 1400 yeah. is based on a source wrote that muhammad's trustworthy so therefore muhammad's trustworthy like shame on you muslims if you believe just based on that and what does trustworthy mean like in every single thing in life or just in certain areas like and to what extent 100 percent, 99 percent, 98 percent. like someone can call someone else trustworthy and they still make mistakes and maybe t tell a little fib but like once or twice in their life like yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, but i know that you are trustworthy doc so if you tomorrow at any time declare that you are a uh, a prophet and that you uh are communicating with god and that god brings us a message i will probably believe you because why would i not you are the trust well, that's an interesting so. question what here if i came to you tomorrow and i said that i was sitting on the toilet and that the experiment we ran with the the water soaked napkin yeah <laughs> and if i told you i was by myself on the toilet but it did light on fire that water soaked uh kleenex would you believe me uh well you are trustworthy so but would you believe me Is that a yes <laughs> I would believe no i wouldn't believe you no you shouldn't that's the right answer i would definitely not believe you i would i would say hey i know this guy this guy is a is a, is a cool guy he but, says good things but i'm sorry that's pretty insane i don't yeah. believe him yeah. that's dumb if if it is true if he wants me to if he, if he wants to convince me with that maybe what if Al Jazeera was there on the in the toilet with me and, <laughs> and filmed it? Would you believe it then? No, I still wouldn't believe it. I'm sorry. <laughs> BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, I, I actually call this my miracle of the descending leg, 
But um, <laughs> uh, if the you need to be my of, age, it's the miracle of the ascending leg. <laughs> if the miracle of the descending leg ever occurs, then I will probably reconsider my faith in, in the supernatural. And the miracle of the descending leg is that somebody who has no leg uh, prays to God or, or people pray for him. And suddenly we see a leg visibly coming down from the sky, descending from the sky and attaching itself to this person who is missing his leg. And we have medical reports that this guy did indeed uh, have a missing leg and that this guy is suddenly now has a leg, which indeed did come descending from the sky. This is the miracle of the descending leg. And this miracle will leave little doubt in me. Have you seen Deadpool 2, the movie? No, I haven't. Okay, but in that movie, um, Deadpool gets both legs cut off. Uh huh. And then he grows new legs, but they're like little, like toddler legs, baby legs, oh. toddler legs, and they grow like really fast. I think that'd be even cooler. It's disgusting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I would want to see it descending from the sky. I'm sorry. I, I have, no, I have, pretty cool I have high standards. I mean, why is it? Why do we have to have these vague things? Like uh, a while ago, almost a year ago, there was this time where a lot of Muslims online were praying for my death because I said that I'm sick. You know. I said that I'm 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 currently sick, and I went to the doctor to the emergency, and they couldn't explain what I have. And I had some very weird uh, skin infection apparently going on. It was like that was looking very strange, and the doctors couldn't really explain what's going on. They asked me to go home to take some medication to come back and so on. And when I shared this, they they were saying that uh, Allah is cursing me, and they genuinely believe this. And many of them were actually praying that Allah curses me that he punishes me that and that i die from uh inexplicable uh causes and i thought oh, hey why does it have to be so obscure why does it have to be so hidden why does it have to be so ambiguous let's do this i am currently sitting in a room and if i show you my room if i show you around with the camera you will see that there are no windows in this room this this room is a, a room with no windows i will here pray to god and uh ask him Pray to Allah and ask him to uh, send a lightning through me to punish me and to kill me in a room with no windows. Can Allah do that or can he not do that? It's not a it's not an unreasonable challenge. It should be an okay challenge. To can do you hear that. me? Yeah, I can. I, okay, I can but I'm off. frozen, right? Oh, you're frozen? Can people still hear you? Yeah, well, if you can hear me, they can hear me. Uh, uh, I've yeah. got a nice smile on there. You can just keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe try to, try to do the stop cam and... Uh, push it again down there. No, no. no. Uh, what happens if I refresh? Uh, you will probably come. But have to come back in again. Try that, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, that didn't work. Out. <laughs> There you are with a smile again. That's funny. Oh, well. uh, well, should we wrap it up anyhow? Try to uh, disconnect your camera and connect it back if it no, works. No, I can tell it's my XSplit. Oh, you? Th oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So XSplit I... sucks. I hate XSplit. You hate XSplit? What, what yeah. would you suggest? Uh, nothing. I'm just going with uh, StreamYard for now because streaming softwares are just so crappy. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I tried XSplit and it was, it was horrible to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Funny. So this is, uh, you know, you know what, you know what just happened, right, Doug? Uh, a sign you know, from God. Yeah, you know what just happened. We we were just talking about Allah giving us a sign. <laughs> it looks so ridiculous. <laughs> and you froze, looking ridiculous like this. Well, not ridiculous, but it's like, it's like I'm saying, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is what happened. This is. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm. I'm getting very emotional right now. But uh, I'm about to testify again that, <laughs> that that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is His final messenger. You know what? I was kind of hoping that you would do today is have what? a surprise guest beside me. Oh. You oh. Know, you, you know who? Who? David Wood, I think that'd be great. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, might, you might not uh, agree to ever come on your show if if there's this threat that I might be there too. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we can. Maybe we can do that. I will. Uh, maybe Have you I ever talked to, to him about me? 
Um, I think I asked him once when we were live that I, I told him he should he should join you for a live stream sometime. I said that, and I don't know. He didn't respond to it. He just grinned and didn't respond. Maybe I can I can arrange a meeting with us together. I couldn't uh, I couldn't trick him though. I could only ask him nicely and get him on here because David is very important to me. Yeah. Uh, he's my employer. He uh, pays he's your me. employer. Yeah, he has me on a on a paycheck. He, he pays my uh, insurance so that I keep criticizing Islam because he's a Christian who doesn't like Islam, and he uh, he pays his... me. He pays me so that I don't. He pays me so that I go easy on Christianity and criticize Islam. That's what we have. That's our agreement together. So yeah. Because his is his channel still down? What channel? His channel. His channel. Yeah, is it's he still do? Is he still demonetized and all that? Yeah, he's still demonetized. He, it still doesn't work. By the way, I was just kidding everybody. Please don't take this seriously. What I just said about what I just said about David Wood employing me. Please don't take that seriously. Uh, that would be very, very, very dumb. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. Doug, will he just be frozen on us like this? I mean, I'm a ventriloquist and I can hold still. I'm really good at holding still. So I'm actually live right now. And oh, yeah. I'm and I'm just I'm producing these sounds without moving my lips. That's fantastic. I, think I know. Is... I'm I practice have... with a dummy all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have more evidence that you are the real deal than we have for Muhammad being trustworthy right now. So I look like I'm talking to a Muslim right now, saying, "Come on, <laughs> <laughs> really." <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? We should do this again. We should uh, have more live streams together. You should join me sometime. We should talk about different things. We should have certain uh, some analysis of uh, other things. When I get into discussions, debates with uh, Muslims, we can talk about that together. You can have argumentations with them. Would you, you ever can, come you on with something up? Would you ever come on my show? And when I have Muslim guests, I would definitely. I would. Yeah. Okay. I would, oh, yeah, I would discuss with them too. Point. Yeah. As long as there is no uh, threat, as long as uh, we can agree beforehand that they don't ask me difficult questions about Islam, I can, of course, always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, we have a prearranged set list of what you can ask. Yeah. Yeah. MP. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. Well, I thanks for having me on. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is, was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, let's do this again soon. I guess we will go offline here, and I will have you back again sometime, Doug. Okay? Sounds good. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, everybody, and uh, I will see you soon. I will probably see you tomorrow again in the live stream. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And uh, as – oh, I forgot the live uh, the, the Super Chats. I'm very sorry. Wait. I would read the super chats. I will do that. Do you want to stick around, Doug, in case someone asks you questions? Or... Sure. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I completely forgot that. Oh, you know what I could do? I, I don't want to be rude here. <laughs> no, I can't do that. What I can you do? Think of... I was trying to think of a way to get my mouth to move. <laughs> <laughs> could you technically uh, just restart XSplit and do this again? Or yeah, something? I'll try that. You start with the. the, the okay, I'll, I'll start screen. with that stuff and you can come back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's focus on me right now and my bottles. So everybody, yeah, this is this is fun. Uh, let me just quickly get to this to the super chats. I want to uh, answer the super chats and certain comments that we have here. Um, this was a very different, a very unique discussion. I think this was like a live stream, like like none other that I had before. Uh, okay, super chats. Now, Hindu historian said, the idea that a religion needs human effort to defend and propagate itself to all people, yet promises eternal hell to those who don't believe in it, is ridiculous. God is not insecure. I would agree with that. <laughs> Namar Naka said, um, per Islam, even Allah isn't free to do anything that Muhammad didn't approve of. Allah also expects to follow the Quran. TT said... Are you back? Oh, you're I'm back. back. 
You're back. Awesome. There you are. Awesome. I don't know why I didn't do that sooner. Welcome back. No, it's fine. Uh, TT said, dear Muslims, do you enjoy reading the Quran? That's a good question. Dear Muslims, do you enjoy reading the Quran? I actually made that, uh, I actually asked that question in one of my videos where I said, this is a very easy challenge. I simply challenge Muslims to really sit down and read through the Quran for a while and to ask themselves if they enjoy reading this book, if they truly think this is a wonderful book that is so amazing. Or maybe they can even try to, to force themselves to say it. Maybe they can sit down for hours and uh, think about that. Can they, say, can they say to themselves, wow, this is an amazing book. I'm having so much fun reading this. This is so enjoyable. I have never read anything more beautiful than this. Can they do that? I really wonder. And how many of them have it memorized? Like, don't some Muslims say that it's a lot of them memorize it? Many, it's, it's not many Muslims have memorized. I mean, it's like if you really want to ask the question, there are probably uh, only less than five percent of Muslims have probably read it. They read the Quran in a, in a language that they understand. Uh, it's it's very few Muslims who have actually memorized it. There are people who memorize it because it's supposed to give you extra points in heaven. Uh, but yeah, a few more versions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe a few more. Yeah, a few more virgins and some extra refills of wine. That alone, seriously, virgins as a reward? Yeah, is right? that serious? It is. <clears throat> it is, but it's not. That's not a reward. You want an experienced person. You are not. You are. Not. <laughs> 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 yeah. Am I wrong? Uh, but you, it. What you're misunderstanding is that these are not just virgins. The, these are very special virgins. Super that virgins. Have, uh, super virgins that have big eyes. Big eyes. And big me. eyes. Big eyes. Uh, very desirable breasts. Their skin is so uh, good, good looking. Their skin is so bright and soft that you can almost see the bones through their skin. And they good are eyes. so they are so good, so obedient, so serving that they only want to give themselves to you and to nobody and nothing else no but the you, and they i don't care about any of that wine. because i don't care about any of that if if they're virgins they got no experience it's well, like would you let a surgeon operate on you that's never done surgery before well the thing is uh for eternity even if you take their virginity they will become virgins again probably so that's the that's the thing Doug. I don't think you are. I mean, all it wipes their memory of the skills that they've learned, and then they probably not. But they will just again. they will just be virgins again. You you are not understanding uh, the uh, the power of Allah. That's <laughs> seriously that's, that's virgins as reward. Facebook. Come yeah. on, what's yeah. wrong? I, what you also do is what you also get is that you will um, you will uh, sit together with all the other believing Muslims, with all the other uh, great people. You will sit together, reclined on big seats, while servants come and give you uh, cups of wine, which does not intoxicate you. So it's not just virgins. Sounds like but... Buffalo Wild Wings with their watered down beer. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Should I have said that? Sorry, Buffalo Wild Wings. This is a joke. <laughs> this show has been sponsored by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fname Lame said, "You can't prove that Thor didn't say all, didn't slay all the all the ice giants. You have never seen ice giants. Uh, I don't. I didn't think so. Thor is greater than Allah or Yahweh. I completely agree with that as well. <clears throat> Good argument." Rebecca Barsef made a super chat and said, can we now have uh, Judaism? Can we have how Judaism is different discussion too? Oh, a discussion on how Judaism is different. We could, yeah. If somebody will join me for that, we could definitely do that. Yeah. Some of my best friends are Jews. <clears throat> oh, really? Now we know why you don't like <laughs> Islam. <laughs> Jeez. I actually have uh, a lot of uh, Jewish subscribers. Uh, <laughs> you probably do too, right? I, no? Yeah, I, I do. I do a lot of, I do. I do, yeah. They are my main motivator. That's why I keep doing this. Uh, so Search for Truth made a super chat and said, even infants are created for hell in Islam. Sahih Muslim 2662, books 446, Hadith 47. Uh, Riziko LP. Well, yeah, the Quran clearly says. <clears throat> the, the Quran clearly uh, and openly says. I could even bring a thing for this, a Quran verse for this. I don't want just want to be speaking here without any proof here. Uh, <clears throat> so here's the question. If, while you're looking that up, if there's a Muslim uh, with a child listening, 
would you be okay with Allah telling you, hey, um, my plans for your child is that they will spend eternity in hell. I've just chosen your child to do that. Well, the thing is, Allah also gave him the chance to uh, to be guided to the truth by Allah, if Allah wants it for them. But does Islam teach that Allah can just burn people if he wants? Yeah, but uh, and he will misguide you and burn you in hell if that's okay. what he wants. But, but the thing is, you also... Allah also has given you the chance to be sincere so that Allah may guide you to the truth so that he doesn't misguide you. And oh, you that's right. clear to me. So Allah can misguide you and guide you yeah. at the same time. I get yeah. it. That's clear and, to me. And Allah, Allah wants to give you the chance to be guided by Allah so that you can believe in Islam because nobody can believe in Islam unless Allah wants them to believe in Islam. And if Allah wanted you to believe in Islam, then you would believe in Islam. But so let me guess, he's not, is he responsible or not for who goes to heaven and hell? Well, it's your fault. So Okay. Yeah. But, you have, but you have to acknowledge, if you were sincere, Allah would guide you to the truth. What and comes the, first, the sincerity or Allah's guidance? To, don't question Allah's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't ask those questions, right? <laughs> Um uh, yeah, let's see. Here. Here in this in this verse says in this verse, Quran chapter seven, verse one hundred and seventy-nine. I hope I opened the, the 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 correct one. And we have certainly created for hell many of the jinn and mankind. Jinn are those beings that come uh at night at specific times and take uh and steal your belongings when you don't look and also kidnap your kids at night. That's what Muhammad said. Uh yeah. So uh, if you if you stole this if your bike is stolen one morning it was probably the jinns that come at a specific time at night and steal bikes. So uh, the Quran says in chapter seven verse one hundred seventy nine and we have created certainly we have certainly created for hell many of the jinn and mankind. They have hearts with which they do not understand. They have eyes with which they do not see, and they have ears with which they do not hear. Those are like livestock; rather, they are more astray. It is they who are the heedless. So, okay, so this verse say, is saying Allah creates people <clears throat> and dooms them to hell. Yeah, because, uh, and you have hearts with which you don't understand, eyes with which you don't see, and ears with which you do not hear. And Yeah, but they were created that way. They were created for though. hell. But you are heedless. That's why Allah created you that way. Yeah, you're, and, Allah created you terrible for yeah. hell, and that's where you will end up. That sounds like yeah. a very loving God. I get well, actually, yeah, Muslims don't care about love, right? But look at this whoever Allah guides, <laughs> he's the guided, and whoever he sends astray, he's the one, he's he's of the losers. So if Allah guides you, then you are rightly guided, and if he doesn't guide you, if he leads you astray, then you are a loser because Allah created you for hell because you have hearts and eyes and ears with which you do not understand, and you are like livestock. So what are you gonna yeah. do? What but gonna Allah's do? not responsible that he created certain people for hell, he's not responsible for that. It's your own fault. It's your own fault that Allah created you with yeah. no. Is there any chance that they won't go to hell if Allah says you're going to hell? Well, if you ask for it, if you are sincere, then Allah may guide you. But then this verse would be wrong because He certainly created you for hell if you're a jinn. Well, but. Uh, can a jinn turn from his ways? He can. If he is very sincere, then Allah will guide him to heaven as well. But they have hearts that don't understand. How's, how would they ever be sincere? They have well, eyes which they do not see. How could they ever be sincere? They have ears that do not hear. How could they be sincere and follow Allah? They're well, doomed. I don't. I don't think you are in any position to question Allah's. Uh, yes, I am. I am <laughs> Pine Creek. Say my name. <laughs> <laughs> this is very strange. Like it's. It's like. It's like. Um, it's like. Uh, I create a group of people. I create a group of five people, and I. Create them with different abilities, with different capabilities, different uh, minds and hearts and ears and all that. And uh, some of them I create capable of understanding what's going on and going to heaven. Others I create uh, incapable of that because they are dumb, they're sick and all that. And I'm, I want to burn them in hell because they're like less than animals, basically. Uh, and then I tell them, hey, guys, I'm holding my, I will hold my hands up now if, if you can correct the. Uh, tell me how many fingers I'm holding up, then I will not shoot you. I will grant you paradise. If you give me the wrong number, then I will shoot you and you will burn in hell. So I start, but the problem is some of them are blind and they can't see. 
you know, and they have to just tell me how many fingers I'm holding up. And I created them blind. They can't see. But I yeah. asked them, hey, how many fingers am I holding up? And the blind one says three. And I'm like, haha, wrong. Remember and I said shoot said, and kill. Remember I said to you uh, last time we talked that in a lot of ways, Islam is like Calvinism in Christianity. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, this is giving me some Calvinistic vibes right now. The issue is with Islam, it actually has a different, um, it goes differently with Islam. It's not like uh, the story is not that humans have uh, kind of fallen into sin and uh, gone astray and done something to themselves, to their own nature. <clears throat> the story is that Allah intended all of it to be like this from the very beginning. <clears throat> Allah, before he created you, gathered humans in this place uh, before time began and he made with them an, an agreement and said to them i will give you something that i have never given to anybody before free will if i gave it to the mountains they would crumble of fear and they would reject it and say hey don't give me this well even the mountains they would they would be like no don't give me that you know the mountains you know but humans have agreed and said Yes, we can take this responsibility. We can be weighed with uh, this challenge, with truth and falsehood, and we will be good, and we will believe in you, and we will go to heaven. And Allah said, are you sure? Am I your God? And people said, yes, we are sure. Of course, you are God. You created us. And he was like, are you sure? And the people said, yes, we are sure. And they was like, okay, here, have it. And then we were created, but we have forgotten that that happened. We forgot that it happened. But if you look into your into your nature, deep inside, deep down, you will see and notice that there is indeed a certain deep memory instilled within you of that agreement that you have made with Allah, which tells you to believe in Islam. And when you reject that belief, when you reject this agreement that you yourself made, which is why you are responsible, then you will have betrayed Allah and you will deserve to burn in hell forever. It's a fun story. <laughs> yeah 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 that was a good reaction thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 so that's that's islam for you <clears throat> okay uh risiko lap said kannst du mal ein video mit ex muslim klären aufmachen um that's german and th th that said can you also make a video with the channel ex muslim klären auf which is a german ex muslim channel uh, I can. We actually agreed very long time ago that we should make a live stream together, but we never did it. Uh, I don't know why. Um, if you do make a German channel, you have to start on time because the Germans are punctual. I know. That's why I gave up making German videos because I'm not good enough for that stuff. Uh, Stop Scamming Man said their favorite arguments seems to be that the Quran has always been exactly the same. Just as just ask Uthman, the variant Quran burner, or the secretary that defect that defected when Muhammad agreed to reward a surah. Yeah, uh, that's by the way one more miracle that Muslims will bring up. They will say that the Quran is the only book that has never been changed and that has been preserved from the very beginning, word for word. Well, let me guess. Let me guess. Allah. Let me guess. If you find a book that has been changed that has the title Quran, they'll just say that's not the real Quran. Am I right? Yeah. Well, they will say, uh, yeah, they, yeah. So they say if you, they, they say we have clear proof from the very beginning that this book was preserved word for word. It has never been changed. All other religious books have been changed, and we can trace back this book to its to its very origins. But the origins that we trace it back to are origins that were established after numerous people came together and collected their uh, their oral memory, their oral uh, transmissions and their notes of the Quran. They all came together, dozens of them, and certain people collected those verses then and turned them into a book, which uh, then went through different hands. And then they came together and decided which version of these books they should keep and which versions should burn because they had uh, different words and different marks and they wanted to get rid of the confusion and wanted to united as a single book and we can trace that apparently back we really can't but we can trust the narrations of that whole story and that simply proves that the, that the quran has been preserved from the very beginning and who are you to doubt that i'm sorry uh, and oh that's there was, there was all the super chats there was one more here right right here Go for freedom in a super chat and said, would you mind explaining one hadith to us? What's the message from this at Bukhari 1285? Uh, you want me to take this one? Oh, yeah. Do you want to? 
Uh, sure. Well, it's in English, sure. right? I can uh, read. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, here I got it up. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is that one. What is this? Is about a funeral? Yeah, it, it is. Um, certain people take this as a uh, as a report, a narration. What the hell is going on with the screen here? Uh, that is very strange. Let me try this again. It just talks about a funeral and sitting between two people. Okay, so um, this is a certain hadith, a certain story about Muhammad, uh, which says, uh, we were in the funeral procession of one of the daughters of the prophet, and he was sitting by the side of the grave. I saw his eyes shedding tears. He said, is there anyone among you who did not have sexual relations with his wife last night? Abu Talha replied in the, in the affirmative. And so the prophet told him to get down in the grave, and so he got down in her grave. Uh, so some people ask why this hadith, why in this hadith Muhammad is asking somebody for somebody who didn't have sex last night so that they can go down to the grave and uh, arrange the body of this dead woman, uh, of this dead girl. And people, people sometimes imply that this is uh, about uh, necrophilia or something like that. But um, I've never deeply looked into this specific narration, but I'm pretty sure that this is not what that is about. What this is actually about, I think, is that um, in order to process a uh, a funeral in Islam, you must have uh, you you must have been washed in the proper way. You must have uh, done your full body washing, and you must yeah. have also uh, done the ablution, which you do before a prayer. And um, I don't know if there are any specifications about having sex that night, but I guess what Muhammad is asking for here in this specific narration is he's asking for a person who is pure by the proper standards and somebody who didn't just have sex last night oh so, that's why the virgins in heaven because they're pure yeah. right yeah, they're of course they're pure yeah yeah so uh so sex in itself is actually defiling uh -huh. but just the, yeah it, it this is a plot hole i think in islam it's uh -huh. sex is bad because it makes you impure but it's good and it's a reward well the thing is um if you <laughs> yeah is that a plot hole yeah it, it's not really um i don't know it's, it's it's the logic of that is very strange but uh if you if certain things leave your body then you have done something then you are you have become impure and you have to wash yourself again but sex is also yeah it's it's, it's a it's a very strange thing to think about to be very honest i don't know it is interesting <laughs> I don't know. It is interesting, Doug. What can I say? Okay. Yeah. All right. That's it. Uh, no more. Nothing more on screen. The people who stayed this. after we pretended to leave. Uh -huh. Remember, we were about to leave. Oh yeah. I mean, the people who stayed are the real AP yeah. followers. Yeah, they are. They are real. They are real. By the way, yeah, um, what, you, what you pointed out, uh, there are certain things such as uh, that sex makes you impure. But the thing is, um, sex in a certain state, especially in heaven, is free from all kinds of impurities. And it's the same with alcohol, for example, with wine. You are not supposed to drink wine when you are on this in this world, on this planet, because wine is bad, it's disgusting, it's terrible, it's horrible, it's dirty, filthy. Stay away from it. But when you go to heaven, you will have wine, which Allah gifts to you. And that wine is special because you know what? It doesn't make you drunk. It doesn't intoxicate you. So it doesn't do what alcohol does to you and doesn't do the things to you, to you which, is, uh, which is why people actually drink alcohol. So you drink alcohol that is not alcohol that doesn't that is not fun to drink and that is different because everything is good in heaven so how about cigars smoking you just have to, you just have to understand that maybe you can do that too i don't know maybe you can do lots of things in heaven that are not bad in heaven because it's in heaven but you just have to go there but on earth it's, do muslims smoke i mean is it okay uh, uh, there are different interpretations that, it, that that it's not okay according to some it's there is nothing necessarily wrong with it but the majority opinion is that it is harmful to you which is why it is bad it is wrong what about things like gluttony like if you're a fat muslim uh it's not it's not it's not a pious thing to do 
uh, you should eat in moderation, but there is nothing wrong with stuffing yourself either, necessarily. Mm. It's not a sin. It's not a sin. But you know what you shouldn't do? Like there are certain major sins in Islam, uh, certain great sins, deadly sins, uh, such as associating partners with Allah, I mean, have, idolatry and all that. And one of those things, which nobody should do unless you really want to be uh, unforgivably sent to hell, is if there is a war, if the Muslims are fighting a war, you should not be a coward and run from the battlefield. Because if you run from the battlefield, then that is an unforgivable sin and Allah will send you to hell forever. Hmm. You should fight for Allah. You should stay there. It, it sounds to me like Muhammad had a little bit of a Napoleon complex. Yeah. You know, short in yeah, stature, maybe short in other areas. Yeah, yeah. So Allah is, Allah is not only um, against you if you are stupid. Allah is only also against you if you have if you are scared. You should you should be scared of hell, which is which is why you should believe in Allah. But you should also not be scared enough to leave the battlefield out of fear for your life, because then Allah will send you to hell forever. And that was today's uh, <laughs> message. <laughs> What's interesting is I actually think Islam appeals to men more because of that testosterone value you were uh -huh, just uh -huh, mentioning, uh -huh. and Christianity appeals to women more because it's more about Jesus' yeah, love yeah, and yeah. let the little children come to me. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Christianity has more more feminine aspects, whereas Islam is uh, has very very masculine, extremely uh, strangely masculine aspects. Not not masculine actually. They are very uh, primitive masculine from a seventh century desert that was constantly hot and didn't leave people much uh comfort is the reverse true? like in christianity men are more likely to leave christianity than women in the at least in the united states i wonder if the reverse is true that women are more likely to leave islam than men i'm not sure if there is any i, I don't think there's any possible data on that but i would say that it's again uh that men are probably more likely to leave Islam than women simply because uh, men will be more um, men Risky. will be more more likely to 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 analyze the whole thing and to think about it and to they, they will be yeah they will be Careful. more risky and they will be daring uh, <laughs> because women in, in Muslim society are, are very much put into the background of society they're yeah. supposed to be quiet and not show themselves not engage very much in these things that are made for men you know so their last decision was to say I do yeah yeah right yeah yeah. Was your wife Muslim ever? No. no so you got married no. after you got out? Yeah, I, we got married uh, a few years ago. She, my wife, is actually a former Christian. She was, uh, she was Christian. She left Christianity. She became an atheist, and we met online because I was looking at uh, after I left Islam and after I stopped believing in God altogether. I was looking for uh, communities online that were like uh, made of atheists and people who criticize religion. Not and Tinder, I, though, I, right? I, found, I found her. <laughs> no, there I found her. And that's how we met, actually. Yeah. OK, so yeah, yeah. what's good is your in-laws probably don't like the fact that she left Christianity and your parents don't like the fact that you left it. Islam. Um, we so never. The in-laws are not causing you troubles. Then are you could basically they're not. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. They are since they are Christians, uh, they are quite peaceful about everything. I don't have any, don't have problems with anything. But yeah, it's the problem comes mostly from my side. Mm. Yeah, yeah. From does your the wife of tolerance? Does your wife fear um, your side? She doesn't fear. No. Uh, I also don't fear my side either. I mean, I don't, I don't see any danger. I don't see. Any you never fear that someone's gonna like. You don't have the desire to have a working line German Shepherd like I do. <laughs> well, I have um, the only thing that I, of course, take necessary precautions for and take necessary safety measures for is uh, people in the public threatening me, and I am in contact with the law for that too. But from my own side, from my family, I don't fear anything at all. How many times have you had to contact the law? Like, are you talking police or FBI? FBI, yeah, FBI. I've, I've had contact with them several times. Uh, they also keep in touch with me. They ask me to send them things sometimes. They asked me before, I met with them twice in person. They asked me before to send them uh, lists of people who threaten me and things like that. So I do keep in touch with them, it's quite nice. It's good to know that that the people in charge are actually protecting your right to 
do this, you know. It's it's good. I don't know if I should say this. Yeah, I think they caught him. I'll say it. I used to live, I used to be neighbors with one of the top 10 most wanted list for people. Well, oh, really? What? And the FBI contacted me and I kind of worked for them for a while. Really? Yeah. And um, I lived in a kind of poor neighborhood, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Uh, years ago. And um, one day I got my car to go to the bank to make a deposit and I was tailed. Uh -huh. And I make a left. This it was an SUV, dark SUV, makes a left. I make a right. I start get suspicious. So I start making a whole bunch of turns, uh -huh. circling, vehicle is following me. I start panicking. And then the flashers went on uh -huh. internally in the vehicle. Oh, yeah. And I thought, okay, at least it's not whatever. But anyhow, uh, and then a U.S. Marshal approached me and said, you live in this address? Yeah. Do you know who your neighbor is? No. And, <laughs> and so apparently it was one um, a cartel member. Um, and I, Dude. yeah. <laughs> and I, what was interesting is I had stuff stolen from my garage or my carport many times over the years, but we had these new neighbors move in across the street. All theft stopped. I mean, uh -huh. it's like, it was like a Muslim country, right? You could leave the keys in your car and yeah. nobody would take it. Yeah. And um, I was wondering why. And yeah, that was why. Yeah. 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 Interesting. <laughs> that's, that's fun. Yeah. Okay. I got to go. Okay. Me too. Uh, Doug, it was awesome. Very nice. Um, let's come together again. Let's do more stuff together. It will be a lot of fun. It was a pleasure to me. Everybody, you can follow uh, Doug Pine Creek uh, on his own YouTube channel. I have linked to it below in the description. I might share some excerpts of the, of this uh, as well because it was so much fun. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, thank you so much, Doug, for coming again. And everybody, have a fantastic day and stay away from Islam.